Welcome to the latest episode of Lean In Leander. Continuing in the Vote in Leander series, I recently had the opportunity to sit down with current council member Chris Sersnick as he runs for re-election in place five on the May ballot. Chris and I have had an acquaintance for some time. He was actually a guest on the early version of Lean and Leander while we were still kind of getting our footing and uh, is maybe responsible for the Vote in Leander series. It's from there that the idea sprang. So um, I was really happy to be able to get some time with him, sit down, kind of chat about where he's been so far with his service to the city of Leander as well as what he thinks uh, the future may hold. So I'm really excited to share this episode with you and I hope you find it informative as well. So without any further delay, here's my conversation with Chris Sersnick. So I'm here with Chris Sersnick, uh, who is place five. Five, yep. okay, place five, I should know that. Um, current council member yes, running for re-election. Yep. So I appreciate the time. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. Hey, uh, what was really funny about this, and we were talking beforehand, so yep. for those of you who are fans of the podcast, um, Chris was my guest for the fourth episode that I yes. taped, um, which was a, a not a vote in Leander. It was Chris. just, I knew yep. Chris because he had sold me my house, yep. and uh, we were acquainted, and I was looking for content. So he was nice enough to right. give me some time. Um, but as it turns out, this is episode 40 which I just wow. thought that was kind of crazy. That's pretty awesome. 40 is a good number. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, hey, that's... Proud that's, to be four and proud to be 40. There you go. <laughs> so, again, I appreciate the time. Thanks you a lot. Bet, Thanks for um, So you and I have a little bit of history. Yeah. And so, again, just for full transparency, uh, Chris and I are very well acquainted. Um, yeah, if you go back to episode four, you find out why. There's some interesting things there that uh, we discovered uh, initially. Um, but now it's been a little bit of time, and uh, you know he's. I know that when we initially had some conversations, uh, mm -hmm. you talked about whether or not you would run again and that type sure. of thing. We really didn't go into it at that point, but um, let's start there. Sure. Um, so this time around, it is part of the Vote in Leander yep. series, and it's so official. this is a little bit more <laughs> politically official. I, I did watch a bunch of the ones you did afterwards too, and I said, "Oh wow, it was, it was almost like a preview of what's to come." It was. Right there. It was. It was actually, and I. There's a couple things I have to credit Chris for. Uh, number one was um, he, because of some technical difficulties oh, that yeah. we had. The we, first had time. we had four A and we had four B. We'll say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, he beca I, because of him, I became a little bit more aware of how I was setting things up. So that was a good lesson learned. Um, and then also, really honestly, our that interview, the the number yeah. four was what gave me the idea to do the series. Oh, great. It really was. It was like, okay, oh, right. well, that's kind of a good conversation to have. Um, so, yeah, so you, you have a couple of... Uh, I, uh, you, I mentioned this in our first... In the, when we first met, I was like, you're part of the Lean and Leander lore. Oh, there we so. go. <laughs> we'll do it. Well, I'm proud to be part of it. Yeah, I, I, Thanks know, for so, allowing me in. Yeah, no, seriously. And, but, but so that you understand that, and again, it's my audience. I always try to be as transparent as I can possibly be. Again, we're well acquainted. We know each other very well. So this conversation will probably be a little bit different than some of the others where I'm not as familiar with the people or if they're a newer candidate, I probably don't know them at all. Um, here with Chris, we have a little bit of history. So we'll be able to talk a little bit more about some of the things um, that um, might persuade people one way or the other as to you know where you are, where you stand sure. on the... But I'm going to afford you the same courtesy that I afford everybody else. Yeah. We're not going to do any deep dives. We're not going to get into you know, um, you know the the granular right. issues. Um, but I think it's fair uh, that we have a conversation a little bit more about you know what you've done yep. here in Leander, and uh, and and what you see you know coming around again. So like sure. I said, it took a little while to get there, but um, let's start there. Sure. Why do you run again? Yeah. So it, it, that that came with a lot of really 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 deep thought. So last year, same time, had no idea if I was going to do it again or not. And so I'm kind of like a, I wouldn't say a day by day guy, but you know, um, and right now it seems like it's year by year, whether it's work or home or, or city government stuff. Um, ultimately, the short answer there is I felt like my voice was still needed. Um, honestly, that's, that, that would be the short version of it. There's different ways of how I came to that, um, including prayer, including being sick with COVID, I mean, you were nice enough to share a story about even people close to you. Um, this this last uh, 
Christmas, I went down pretty good and wasn't coming up. And I feel like I was at a place of vulnerability that I had to look at things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And I saw the value in what I've been able to add for the last three years when I've been here. And I, I was really losing hope before that. I just wasn't sure. Um, and, and you just, you get, you get lost in it sometimes. I'm not a guy who wants my name in the paper. Um, that was former life and sports and stuff. Um, I really just want, my, my job has always been to, you know, previously um, on a council that I served with, some of the council members are gone. Uh, a mayor that I served with is gone. We have new council members. We have new mayor. My job has always been to serve the city of Leander by supporting those council members and the mayor and make them be the best possible mayor or council member they can be. Um, whether they are um, female, male, you know, this political party, that political party, doesn't matter to me in the city of Leander. It's very, very, very important that we bring people together. And so um, why um, I think it's so important is um, that has been my major role, I think, in the last few years, is basically, um, uh, even our current mayor is nice to say, peacekeeper. You know, that was, that was a, it's a role that was just, it, I, I felt naturally um, comfortable bringing people together. My job right here around the corner, you know, I, I say I'm a professional fire putter outer. I know that is not proper <laughs> English, by the way. Yeah, uh, no, but, that's terrible. But when you're building homes for people, and, uh, and it takes, you know, used to be six months, now 12, 15 months, whatever it is. My job is to keep people right here all day long, mm -hmm. right? You, you got to go through it yourself too, mm -hmm. even at the, at the closing table, you know, we ask everybody, would you recommend our company, right? And for 10 years, I can say every single person that we've built a home, that I built a home for has been able to say yes, you know, whether there or the next day saying, yes, actually, I would recommend you. And so that's a really big deal to, to, to and so I feel like my job as, has um, trained me to be able to be some type of counselor. My role is at work as a sales counselor. Mm -hmm. So counseling people and, and being wise counsel, that is um, something that, that, that I've been trained for and I feel comfortable with. And I think it's something that we really still need um, as we're growing. We are still the fastest growing city around, you know, in the whole country. And that's several years in a row. So when you have all these people coming together and you have all these different ideas and you're, do we have, do we have enough water? Do we have enough roads? Are we building too fast? Uh, or do we have enough restaurants? Or I like this place. Or I believe this and I believe this. And if you don't believe this, you're the enemy. And if you don't believe this, you're the enemy. There's all these things. And so what do we need? We need steady, well-tempered, and common-sense leadership. And I have been able to do that. I feel comfortable in that role, and I think it's still needed. So that's why I said yes again. I thought you said this was going to be a short answer. Well, well my short answer was because <laughs> I thought my voice was needed. Right. Correct. All right, all right, yeah, fair I, enough. I, I'm and just kidding and with you. That's about history. Please feel free to kick away. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, I just, I was just giving you a hard time. That's good. Um, no, yeah. thank you for that because I think that was a complete uh, answer, okay. and um, you know, I think that is something that is indicative of the type of person that you are. Um, and you know, my experience with you, we've had the opportunity to work together on a couple of projects yep. and I've on a couple of committees that, you know, we don't have direct interaction, but I know there's been, you know, opportunity to at least kind of exchange ideation, uh, sure. you know, on certain things. So, um, you know, I can comfortably say that, um, that, and, and we joked about this in episode four, that middle, that yeah, middle, middle ground. ground was a yeah, that, that was really interesting that we there, would come There's back a physical representation in this neighborhood, <laughs> actually behind where Andrew lives, where there's this strip between us and this other place. And it just turned into this like, you know, example of bringing two sides together and being this middle ground. So I actually suggested that you, so you let me be a part of the founding of this. And I <laughs> suggested maybe even another podcast at some point. We, 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 right. we still have the idea of the middle ground. Right. I think, I think I, I think I kind of bring that to vote in the end. Because do. Yeah. that for me is, is the, is the impetus of these conversations. Um, and, and, and again, I, you know, I don't get into a lot of the politics sure. per se, and, and there are issues and there's things, and you know, my involvement civically is well known. You know, again, I, I'm very transparent. I've served on committees. I've served on the Charter Review Committee. Sure. I'm currently on the Economic Development yep. Committee. You know, so I am doing what I think is, is where I can play a role currently mm -hmm. um, to help move some of those conversations yep to the middle ground. Sure. You know, because uh, what, I, what I'm fond of saying is um, we don't know what we don't know. Yep. And as long as you keep that perspective when you're having any conversation, sure. I think it, it kind of forces you to keep an open mind. Yep. It's like you don't know what you don't know. Well, okay, well, tell me what I don't know. Right. And, and 
even if you get to a conversation where people are maybe uh, you know repeating information that you're aware of, or maybe a, uh, maybe information that you've already debunked, sure. at least at that particular point in the conversation, you know where you stand, so you know where to go with the conversation going forward, right. um, and you can you know react like you said. You mentioned there uh, in that um, in that overview, you said you know, I believe this or I believe that, right. and you know I've come to the conclusion personally. This is just my personal way of looking at this. A belief can only exist if there's opposition to it. If you both agree to the same thing, then it's no longer Although a belief. It's just maybe a statement it's or just a fact. A, yeah, it's yeah. just a fact or a statement or, you know, an opinion. Sure. It's no longer belief. Beliefs can only exist in opposition to each other. Okay. And that's just me personally. That's, uh, that's I, you know, I kind of came to that conclusion. It was all part of this, you know, growth process. Pandemic gave you a lot of time to think. Right. So you had an opportunity to grow a little bit. And right. So, um when we first spoke back uh, about a year ago, I guess, about, about a year ago, we were still very much in the throes of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, from that experience, I mean, obviously, there was a lot that happened afterwards. Man. I mean, just think about it. That's a lot of stuff happened between the last time we sat here right. in the same room and now. Um, including your personal experience, you know, with obviously you had the, you know, you had you fell victim to the pandemic and, and the virus. Sure. Um, has that changed your overall perspective of what might be important in general and then important in Leander? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say um, in general, I agree with you um, that um, the statement that you made about uh, maybe you don't know what you don't know until you know it, or I don't know how you said it, but um, I see myself and uh, I think I was very reasonable and now I would say extremely reasonable. Um, I've been able to sit down and have some conversations that I frankly, um, which I won't go into on this podcast, but um, frankly I think people would that don't know me very well would think I would never do those things. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that there's just people have been through a lot and, um, and I believe God's working on my heart to have more compassion upon people no matter who they are, what they come from. Um, even the other conversation about one of our candidates, you know, I saw a different perspective. Mm -hmm. I saw it from a different place. Mm -hmm. And I think that my eyes have been open to some of those things. So on a personal level, I'd say that. Um, for the city of Leander, yeah, every decision we make has some other, has some other thing towards it, whether it was, you know, the, the viruses that are going around or whether it was, you know, the unfortunate timing of losing water because of one plant being down and then, you know, power being cut because this isn't set up and, you know, other cities being this close, but we actually had it happen to us. And um, every every single decision we make, it just it, it made you be a lot more proactive than being reactionary. Um, if it's once every 70 year storm, okay, well, we just have to be a little bit more prepared. So I think that we've done a great job in responding to that. Yeah, um, I would I would agree with that. I yeah. would agree with that. I think that assessment is a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from the perspective of the way that the council approaches things in general, we talked about this the last time we met, that, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned, uh, I think uh, there's an org chart of some sort that mm -hmm. shows the citizens of Leander at the, at the top of the org chart. Yeah. From the council to all the city staff and whatnot, I mean, I guess the bottom line on that is that mm -hmm. you're answerable to the citizens. Yes. Yeah, the citizens are the ones who make the decisions. Yes. Um, that said, it creates a unique mm -hmm problem, I would say, almost to a degree, because you and I are fortunate enough that, um, I don't know if fortunate enough is the right one, you and I have taken the decision, okay. taken the choice to be involved. Yeah. So we are actively involved. It's, a, right. it's, it's literally a conscious decision. Right. Um, it's one of the things that I shared with you right early on when we started talking. I was yeah. like, look, I decided to get involved. It's like I moved here. Right. I'm like, okay, there's an opportunity here to share what I've gained, knowledge that I've gained outside of this area, sure. you know, going through growth and things like that in Houston and, and not being able to be involved because of the way that Houston was set up, it, it just, you, you couldn't, you couldn't. It, mm. was, it was very difficult. Here, it's a little bit more, okay, yes, I can get involved here so I can make a difference. Right. Um, and I'm not saying it's necessarily my way or the highway either. I'm just like, you know, I want to make a difference. It's, you know, let's talk about these things and make sure the decisions that we're making going forward are in the best interests of the long-term sure. um, benefits to the city. Um, we recently sat at an economic development committee meeting and um, 
our guest speaker was the former mayor of um, Frisco. Okay. And he said, cities are forever. Yep. And I was like, you know, that's a great way to be able to put that because while the issues that we may discuss, uh, you know, whatever it might be, ballot proposition, X, Y, Z, whatever. Sure. Those are temporary conversations. They're there may be timely or they may be topical, but in the long run, you know, what does that do for the right. forever of the city? Right. And I like the fact that you kind of come around to the fact, or come around to the uh, discussion point, that the city is being a little bit more proactive now, that they've led, that the lessons learned are there, which I think is really important to point out. Right. Um, because I can see it. I, I'm involved in, enough to know that, okay, yeah, they did figure something out here. Specifically communication. Well, I think communication has gotten a lot better. Yes. There's still room for growth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's still yes. room for growth, but yeah. it has gotten a lot right. better. I think that th one of the impediments to that, and we talked about this last time, too, was that there is this siloed approach. Yep. Okay? Yep. Uh, whether it's committees or the city or the staff or whatever. Or departments. Yeah. Departments, yeah, exactly. It's very siloed. Nobody seems to share the information. Um, and I think there's opportunity there. Yeah, um, 100%. You know, just to be able to be a little bit more forthright about what it is that we're talking about. Um, there are situations where you can't right. uh, for competitive, uh, you, know, you know, issues. Maybe you're trying to woo a new company sure. to the city of Leander or, you know, uh, create an, uh, uh, an employer, a larger employer. And you can't publicly talk about those things That's because right. it takes away the advantage that you might have over another city who may be very well trying to do the same thing. Right. Um, but overall, I think you can let people know. I think it was really interesting today. Um, before we met, I was just uh, looking on some social media and I noted that um, the mayor, the current mayor, made a announcement of sorts. Like, I hope you're seeing what's coming. I hope you're seeing all of the businesses that mm -hmm. are coming to Leander. Um, I think there's a certain amount, and I don't know if you'll agree with this, but tell me what your perspective is. Okay. I think there's a certain amount of inevitability to that. Yes. Like people are going to come. Gonna we're, come. We're growing as fast as we are, and there's only so much space up that corridor. That city's built out. We're next in line. Yeah. People want to be here. That makes the most sense. There is going to be a lot of that. Yeah. How do you manage that at the same time keeping an eye out and for that the other opportunities? Mm -hmm. So again, I guess here, like, make it easier. A lot of people talk about, oh, there's nowhere to eat out here in land, yep. which is relatively true. I mean, sure. you can find some nice places. Some great places, by the way. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Small business. We yes. support small business. And I'm not going to just name one of them because then somebody else will get offended. That we have right. They're all, they're all really good. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but to shop local and to, and to yeah. live in your city and to help support the tax base of your city, I think, is important. It's a decision, again. I mean, because it's easy. And we both know that it's a, not even a 15-minute drive. Sure. And we can be at Cedar Park and spend our tax dollars over there. Sure. Um, and sometimes you kind of have to do that. Right. But as Leander grows, you have to keep an eye out for, okay, what do we have, what do we need, right. and how do we compete with what's nearby? Because at the end of the day, the city is responsible for um, the revenue generation that's right. for the city, uh, right. whether that's property taxes, whether that's sales taxes, whether that's uh, you know, um, bringing in Class A, Class C buildings and stuff right. like that. You have to diversify. That's right. So that's been a challenge. Big one. And, and, and what do you see with that going forward? Um, sure. And you can pick any example, but I, I offer maybe here Lake Line uh, and, and yeah. Hero. We've talked about that before. So. Well, yeah. And, and so, I mean, there was even a project that we approved over here that I wasn't in favor of, not because it's not going to be a good project, not because of anything else, but because that project is 100% residential. It didn't even have to do whether it was rental or whether it was for sale or anything like that. I'm just saying that same intersection that you just pointed to is supposed to be a pretty major intersection. Mm -hmm. And on this corner, as a council, we voted for over half of that property over there on mm -hmm. this side, which we definitely know is already in the city limits, already annexed, already here. Like, we just said it's going to be something else. So I think making good decisions based on our comprehensive plan and preserving our opportunities is going to be the biggest way that we're going to do that. So, um, do you see a challenge there right now? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Because there's, I think that um, you, I say that, but and I also say things like you know the market should 
you know, dictate what goes on. Well, the market right now would love to build, you know, 100,000 apartments as fast as possible and uh, equally as many single family homes and any type of residential stuff because there are so many people moving here. So if you just did that, then we would literally have only homes and uh, or only apartments or only condos everywhere. And when your city's built out at some point, what happens is all of our revenue that's coming in is one coming from one stream. Developer fees and permitting and all that kind of stuff stops. If you don't have the commercial growth, you don't have the, the sales tax that's coming in, it's all property taxes. So if something else is needed, if we ever go to a point and you know, we need more officers or more stuff fixed, or it's 100% dependent on our property taxes, and there's a really good chance at some point that you have to raise those taxes, and that's not a situation I ever want to be in as a city. So um, how we do it is preserve, preserving what we got. As far as the types of businesses and things that are coming, you know, we're in a, we're in a tough spot. Cedar Park has knocked it out of the park as far as big box, retail, inner, like maybe even restaurant stuff, those things, right? So the problem is when, when and, and again, I'm not the economic development expert. We have people, the first thing I will do as a, as a as council member is encourage uh, our city manager and our economic development director and everybody else who's involved there to be going after these places aggressively and, and let me know what you need me to be involved in. You want somebody from council to be there to go put on, uh, you know, a, a, to give a good handshake and to be able to answer questions from a council perspective. I'll be there in a second if that's what you need. My job is not necessarily, and to, and to use whatever contacts I have to bring people here, but we have people that are paid professionally to do that, and I want to hold them accountable to do those things, okay? Um, with the proximity to Cedar Park is where I was going with that. Well, if you have, let's just use whatever, let's say, um, Oh, Whole Foods is right there, Dick's Sporting Goods and all that kind of stuff, right? Chances of them wanting to be two exits up on the, on the, right. on the way are not very likely. <clears throat> so what happens is that you have another city to our north that probably is going to have a better chance at landing some of those places. So can we be a little bit more intentional about who we're going after, who we're incentivizing, who we're trying to attract here, and aggressively seek them out? Um, that's what I see as, as being beneficial to us. And, and by that, I mean campus employers. Um, but to get campus employers, you're going to have to have things for their family, uh, places for their families to live. But also, um, if they're taking lunch, you better have restaurants in place. You mm -hmm. better have things to serve them <coughs> as a company if they're going to come here too. So there's a certain amount of amenity that's needed. So it's really a blend of the two. Um, I see us um, really going after places like that. So you said Class A, Class B, office space. I think that really needs to be something majorly that we're going after um, right now, specifically. Um, and more than likely because of all the tech companies that are coming here. Mm -hmm. um, even if it wasn't the big guy. They're all right. right? No. Even if it's not. There are plenty of They're other absolutely. B guys, C guys absolutely. that have a lot of business. And, and if, they wanna, if, if, if the big campus for these guys are here, you know, uh, the pair company, right? Or whatever. I'm being a little bit. Dumb, yeah, but, no, but, I know. But the, you like, can say Apple. It's yeah, okay. <laughs> but like you got these guys and you have all these other people that are coming from wherever they're coming from, wherever they have, to, and they, they want to be in Texas because we are a business friendly state, mm -hmm. right? So let's be the most business friendly city to welcome those people here and really take care of ourselves. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, it is a double-edged sword because a lot, of, a lot of the pursuit of that type of business, though there are opinions that uh, will say, well, you know, we don't have the, the, the funding mechanisms to be able to do that. Correct. And I'm not saying that that's not a legitimate argument. I think that there is validity to that statement and validity to that position, absolutely. Um, the challenge is how do you address it, in my opinion. And so, you know, from my perspective, I'm like, you have to be creative. And if when you're forced in a corner, you can be really, really creative about things right. and find new and different ways to be able to appeal to not only the business interests of the city, but the long-term uh, prospects for uh, a foundational and diverse tax base sure. that will support the very things that we want to be able to do in the long run. Right. Um, because without that, uh, you're simply not able to do so. You're sure. just simply not able to do so. And that's a 40-year problem. Right. So the people who are having the conversations today, I think it's fair to say some of them are not thinking 40 years down the line. Mm -hmm. You know, they're thinking the next three to five years, you know, right. uh, depending on the topic. So th it is really difficult, and it's a lot to ask of a person who is essentially volunteering of their time. Sure. But I like the fact that you said you're holding you would hold accountable, or at least I don't know if, I, if that's the term you sure, use. Sure, I think so. Um, but you would hold accountable the staff 
that is responsible for that. Right. So I want to pick up on that note and say, okay, so if we're talking about how we're doing this, mm -hmm. um, would, you, would you think that there is still opportunity for us to improve on the lessons learned and, and the way that we are going after business today? Do you think that there's, there, there, there's room, for, room for improvement there? 100%. Would you, and this, I don't want to put you on the spot, and, and if you don't, if you decline to answer this, I'm 100% comfortable okay. with that, okay? Would you support more um, actionable items coming from committees that are focusing on some of these issues? You can take any committee, okay? Let's just say, let's just say for the sake of argument, I'll take myself out of it. We won't do econ or anything like well, that. Well, I was going to say that's easy one because that's what we're talking about anyway. So. Well, well, econ's easy to talk about, but okay. just in general, okay. what I mean by that. Yeah. Use the arts commission or use Yeah, the, you know, just parks and rec. Parks and so rec, you have you people go. who are concentrating on the issues that are in and around parks and rec. It's an additional six to ten people sure. who are having that conversation. Right. So now... That we've take, appointed to say, please have these conversations. Correct. Right. Correct. So I see a gap there. I believe that. We've talked about this before. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about this before. And it's just like the, 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 the notion that, you know, people are on committees, but there's really, it doesn't what matter what they talk about, nothing, nothing, right. nothing, nothing's going on. And so, yeah, there's a big room for improvement there, if that's what you're asking. So is that something that the council could take, take on and say, you know what, we want our committees, because there's this, the city staff is involved with the committees, right. and they're helping kind of guide. and. I, I'm not saying that they're not taking that in a very uh, objectionable. They've just got a lot going on. They've so. got a lot going on, and right. there's they're, they're stress. But again, this is still to my point. Yep. Because you have people who are taking up their own time, who yep. have an interest in that particular area, and are ideating. They're coming up with solutions. They're right. they're coming up with conversation points and and ways to, a, a, you know, whether it's attract new business or address funding right. or you know pursue grants, whatever it is. But you just don't see enough actionable item coming out. And maybe the actionable item is just for thought. A quarterly um, readout to the council. Like a workshop. A workshop. Yeah. Like these are the things that we're thinking of. So then the council can say, okay, hey, well, all right, city staff X, Y, Z. This seems like a good idea. What do we need to be able to pursue that? Right. So we, we, I feel like we might have, we used to get little, little stuff like that. Um, whether it be from Arts Commission, whether it be from Parks. And I don't know whether it's the last two years and everything that's gone on in the last two years has kind of drained, drained that a little bit. But um, I do think that that should be a major function of, of our boards and our committees. And that should be a, way, a proper way for us to communicate. And once a quarter doesn't seem too much. Um, and maybe they rotate on, 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 right. who's, on who's doing it. So it's, it's not all right. one day and you're hearing everything that anybody's ever thought <laughs> right, about right, right, for exactly. the last three months. Absolutely. And, or, or whatever it is. Or maybe it's, we're going to hear quarterly, and, but it's really every six months that each, whatever it is. Yeah, right? yeah. All, I think what you're asking me is, is there room for improvement? And my answer is a simple yes. Um, and would I support, you know, um, the merging of, of minds, of trying to figure out how does... How does council get in better sync with, uh, with boards and commissions, the people that they've appointed on these, on these boards and commissions? How do we get more in sync with what's going on there? Um, I think that you know, a regular time together would be good. Um, it's kind of like we, we went through something similar like this for the planning and zoning in our city council too. You know, they, uh, they make decisions and, uh, and they are appointed. And what we, what we need to do is we need to sit down and they need to know, all right, council, you know, I'm gonna I'm defending planning and zoning of this because we've had different minds, different personalities, different everything on there. And in my three years that I've been around, and even beforehand when I went to some of the meetings, but it's, um, what do you guys want? What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. What do you want us to do? Mm -hmm. Like, give us give us our give us our thing. <coughs> if you want us to do this? We'll give you feedback. Here's what it is. How can we help you? Right? And I think it's no different with any other with any other board. And you know, we we sat down. We had a workshop with them. And we were able to just talk freely. And some of the conversation was a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. But it was good. It needed to be talked about. Mm -hmm. right? And so I think that that's fair to say about um, any border commission um, that we're out there that's, that's helping us make good decisions. Um, if, like you used an example of the parks. If we're, you know, if we're talking about you know, how we develop the best park in San Gabriel and we're trying to fine tune and finalize those things, yeah, we should. Like, hey, this is us as, a, this is us as the parks board. 
And we think these are the three most important things that we need to do to prepare for that. We need to have, you know, two, you know, public forums where we, we seek input on this stuff. I'm, again, I'm making this completely up. Mm-hmm. This is not what I believe or anything. I'm making things up right now. Um, and, and we believe these are the three most important types of activities that are important for this place. And we think that, um, you know, this is the best way to accomplish, accomplish that. Uh, I think that there, sh- that, there, that there should be free conversation there or free communication there. Um, and it should be a little bit easier to accomplish things together. Well, I'm glad to hear that because, I mean, that's definitely something that I think, again, I, I mm-hmm. think that's a gap. I think there's a gap there because there's a lot of really, especially when you have so many new people coming in. Mm-hmm. And again, going back to a point that was made the first time we sat down, there's like, a, a, like mm-hmm. from the original, you know, group of people who lived in Leander when it was a smaller town. Sure. There's just like, now it's probably closer to five new people for every one person that was here, right. you know, at that time. So when you have all those new ideas, there's all sorts of different ways to think about things and look at things. And I think that's, I do see us moving in that direction, which yeah. I think is good. I, I really do. I think that, I think that um, the council has done a better job of being more proactive. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I do applaud the work that you've done and current members of the council have done in being uh, more directional as well. Uh, you know, understanding that, okay, yeah, I think it's fair to say that you know, maybe from a perspective of you know, t- someone else's problem or tomorrow's problem, I think that may have been pervasive thought process back when Leander was smaller, right. which you know, kind of bit, bit us in the butt a little bit, I think, as a city, because I don't think there was ever, and there couldn't have been. Right. The, again, going back to you don't know what you don't know. There's no way. <laughs> you know, the, you, Nobody, we were, the, no one would have thought that at the right. time. No one would have thought. I remember when I first came back to Austin, even just to visit a few years before we moved here, and I was flabbergasted right. on how different Austin was, right. you know, completely just a change from what I remembered when I was out here, you know, sure. visiting for concerts and, you know, college buddies at UT or whatever, you know, right. completely different city, completely different city right. for good, I think. Uh, you know, I think that the, I think even Austin has, uh, you know, developed in a good way. I think I think it's a it's an interesting mix uh, and dynamic here in Central Texas. I think it's unique. Yeah. I Very really do. unique. Yeah, I really do. So um, let's see. I think we've had a good conversation, um, and I appreciate your your integrity and your and your honesty and your answers. Because I, I know that we probably again we got a little bit. A little bit more into it yeah. than most others, but you know, it didn't feel like it though. And that you could have asked me. That, trust me, I was ready for four or five other things. That <laughs> Andrew and I have had very direct conversations, yeah. and, he, and here's the cool thing: we, we came up with this middle ground thing just because it came out of nowhere. But you know, we don't see eye to eye mm-hmm. on many things, probably. Would, but but we're not that far off. And I think that's that's the big thing. We're not that far off. No, I think and, there's differences yeah. of opinion that you can that you can. Right that you can embrace. Right. You can embrace differences of opinion. Right. Because, again, you don't know what you don't know, and you can't possibly, we right. can't possibly share the same perspective. Right. We're two completely different people. Right. You know, even though while we've sat in this conversation for the last 30-some-odd minutes, sure. we've shared this, right. but I will never experience it the same way you did. Right. And so, and I think one thing I appreciate about our relationship, too, is I've never tried to make you believe something. You've never tried to make me believe something. But we've always been free to say, this is how I feel. I respectfully mm-hmm. think this, for this reason, I said, hey, that, I, I understand. And that gives me a different perspective on that, too. So um, even, even our conversations over the last few years, uh, they've been able to teach me how to just think, uh, think differently, too. And does it change who I am deep down? Who knows? Uh, it might, actually. Yeah. You know? Um, but we, I, like I said, I'm becoming... My wife and my kids will appreciate this, but I'm becoming more compassionate than I have, you know. And so we, we all we all, we have a way of learning things, and usually it's our past experiences yeah. and our wounds. And so I'll say this too: um, I mentioned, you know, uh, my role and how I think I um, I am operating as the most healthy version of myself that I ever have in my life. And I think there's some that's very, very, very important. Um, for me, and I think for anybody, if we're putting, if you want to, if you want to serve on the economic development committee, if you want to start 
uh, you know, a vote in Leander and a lean in Leander, you know, deal here, and your and your reputation is on the line when you're and you're doing all these things. If I want to serve on the city council and sit on that dais where there's a heaviness that comes on you as soon as you go there because these are big decisions you're making and it's just all this the junk of the history of the city and all the good stuff and bad stuff is all you just feel it, mm-hmm. right? If you're not healthy and you're not prepared to be a clean vessel and do things and 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 be able to hear both sides of something, if you're not willing able to do that, it's not the right place to be. Mm-hmm. Period. And so I'm willing to do it again because I feel like the first time I didn't know that I was that I didn't know that I had uh, done a lot of work in my life, and I believe God did a lot of work in me of cleaning me out of other things to prepare me for my first term there. And now I feel like wow. I saw some things from a different perspective. I see the value there. And personally, I am not a perfect man. I'm far from it. The same people, my wife and my kids will tell you, right? But there's been some major changes lately too where it's, a, it's, a, it's like a new baseline in my life. And so operating from this place of being a, a, a healthy place um, is allowing me to just be just say what it is and be okay with it and, and be, like I said, are unoffendable. My job, like right now, with a lot of people, there's, there's, it's impossible that everybody would think that Chris is a nice guy. Because mm-hmm. whether it was something, uh, experience they had, whether I know it or not, there's, or whether an I, assumption that they or, made. Or, or somebody I knew or yeah. I'm associated with or whatever it is. But my, my goal is that I am going to be unoffendable and that I will, I will not give anybody permission to be my enemy. And so those two things have really, really, really helped me to be able to go through this because, you know, we talked about, you know, uh, hard, tough communications. Remember when we had all the water was shut down, right. the ice storm and all right. the things, right? You, you'd be surprised how many emails I got of people that were not very happy and they thought it was my fault personally. Right. And I'm going, this is a tough place to be. And yeah. for a guy who's been here at that time for a year and a half, I wrote back to somebody and said, and I've been here for a year and a half and if, if you think I could have fixed 30 something years of decisions that led to some of these things too and that I could have possibly done something about that, um, and I should resign, I want to know who is going to take my place. Mm-hmm. With those type of expectations, who would willingly would put themselves in that situation? So respectfully, I think, you know, trust me, we are going to do plenty about this, and we have. Um, anything we could possibly do to improve our current water situation, where water is coming from, and also our future intake and, uh, and ability to get it here. Um, those things are done. But it's just one of those examples of it would be very easy to take the bait and, oh, to, for sure. and to just go back at somebody, and, and they might deserve it, but I need to re- remain in this place. Right, and, and I, I, think that's, I think that's genuine, and I appreciate you sharing that, because I think that it's, it is important to have the, um, there's, a, there's a certain amount of decorum that needs to be maintained. Sure. And I think that, unfortunately, um, you know, current events tend to allow us to forget that. Right. And I think that's a, that, that's a misstep, and I think right. it's a correctable misstep, right. but it requires this type of conversation. Absolutely. It requires people to sit down and, and talk about the things that, A, are important to them, B, uh, share their perspective and, mm-hmm. and, and their knowledge base, right. and then C, just the, the effort to find that holistic approach, the holistic uh, solutions yeah. that are directed to our forever town. Yep. Because you and I will be gone at some point. Right. And there's going to be other people who are living here. And I would just hope that they would enjoy mm-hmm. this area of the country as much as we yeah. do. The goal and when, when you're entering anywhere is always to uh, leave it better. So I always want to add value wherever I'm at and leave it better than when I left. Well, I, have, when I, when I, I you know, I, again, I, our conversation is a little different than most. And I hope people can appreciate Look that. Look forward to watching it. <laughs> right? I'll edit the hell out of it. <laughs> um, but thanks for your time. Yeah, um, I'm going to give you a chance just to take a look at the camera there and tell people where they can find out a little bit more about you. Awesome. So this one? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, on, on Facebook, it's uh, Chris for Leander. Um, and, uh, and my email is Chris for Leander at yahoo.com. Um, you can come by Car- Carneros Ranch to my model home. Um, I'm a very easy guy to find. And... Um, I just want to say thanks. I have a lot of people that are supporting me out there. And um, I gave one promise three years ago. Uh, I remember standing up on a chair when I had one. And it was, um, I promise, and I, I think it's very serious because a lot of people have my signs in their yards. And that says a lot about, some, if, if somebody's willing to put a sign in, of your name in their yard, that they, they're trusting you. And so I've earned the trust of a lot of people. And I said, 
three years ago, I will never do anything to embarrass you. And I'm happy to say, I don't believe I have done that and I will continue not to do those things. It might seem something little, but it's so easy to slip up in our positions and it's so easy to, to fall for the bait and to do something differently. So if you believe um, that somebody that is steady and is well-tempered and just makes common sense decisions is the best thing for our rapidly growing city, then um, I am your man and I would uh, happily um, accept your, um, I guess your votes to, to be able to serve you for another three years. So thank you very much for, for all the support I've had out there. And um, thank you, Andrew, for just opening up the door. Yeah. And uh, these, are, these are fun. So. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy it. I always have enjoyed our conversations and I look forward to our continued conversations. Uh, awesome. Well, regardless of, of, of what happens in the election, but sure. as yeah. with every candidate, I wish you the very, very best uh, for success and uh, that you achieve what it is that you're after. Thanks, Andrew. All right, man. Appreciate Thanks. It. Appreciate it. You too. Take yep. care. You too.